Okay, and we are live. Hello and welcome to today's workshop, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Satija Ozen. I lead DevRel here at Grok and I will be your host. Today, I'm joined by Daniel, co-founder of CodeGPT and Ignacio, full stack developer at CodeGPT. Hi guys, welcome. Hi, thank you for inviting us. Hello. Yeah, of course. Super excited to have you today. So uh, to start us off, I will give a very quick intro, um, go over a couple of housekeeping rules, and then we will pass it off to Daniel and Ignacio to learn more. So I hope you are excited as we all are, um, because we have a really exciting workshop today where we will deep dive into a game-changing collaboration that will change the way we write code with CodeGPT powered by Grok. We'll see how Grok's blazing fast inference is in action, with CodeGPT's features to learn how to create our very own custom AI assistance with LLMs powered by Grok to use in our IDE of choice. And this isn't just about writing your code fast, it really is about reimagining your entire developer experience. Just to put that into perspective, um, Imagine having a brilliant senior coding partner or assistant that you can tap on the shoulder at all times, whose knowledge about virtually all programming languages, frameworks, and best practices. Now, also imagine this assistant could work at lightning speed, thanks to CodeGPT's Grok API integration, to provide help faster than you and I can type. It sounds pretty great, right? But it doesn't even stop there because today Daniel and Ignacio will demonstrate how to create AI agents using retrieval augmented generation and knowledge graphs built from your own code base. So not only does your assistant understand code in general, but now knows your specific projects, architecture and coding style, which is extremely powerful. So whether you're a seasoned developer looking to become a 10Xer or a newbie eager to learn from an infinitely patient assistant or tutor for that matter, this webinar is for you. And for housekeeping rules, we only just have one. Um, we're very excited to have you here and we wanna make sure that we answer any and all questions you may have. So we will have a Q and A session at the end. So if you have any questions at all, please just type them out and submit them in the live chat and we will answer them at the end. Hopefully that sounds cool. With that, let's dive in and discover. I will pass it along to Daniel. Thank you so much. Let me share my screen over here and start the presentation. So yeah, today we are gonna talk about how to create a custom code assistant with Grok and CodeGPT. I'm Dani Avila, CTO and co-founder of CodeGPT. I'm from Chile. Um, I'm here with uh, Ignacio Villanueva, full stack, and he's from Argentina. So we are from South America. We uh, start everything like this. We create this, uh, this extension inside of Visual Studio Code, and we start cre creating this connection with uh, AI providers using your own API key. So everything started like that. We start to create this kind of feature inside of a uh, Visual Studio Code with your own account, and you could put your own API key. But right now, we have all these kind of uh, tools connecting with a uh, CodeGPT. So you could build your agent, you could select any agent that we have in the marketplace, and you could connect this agent inside of these kind of tools because we, we know that the, the work of a, a developer live inside of different kind of tools. So we create this integration between the uh, extension, between this agent builder with all these tools, with the GitHub, with a database, with the Slack, and we are creating this ecosystem. So to start, we're gonna put a lot of uh, focus in the Visual Studio Code extension so uh, we are going to teach how to use the extension and then we are going to create an uh, agent uh, with your code base with rag and we are going to use this agent inside of vs code so to start everything you have to go to the uh, marketplace extension in visual studio code and search for code gpt when you get the extension we have more than uh, 
1.4 million downloads. So you could select that that extension. But there is another one, but you you need to select that one. That's a real one. And when you select the extension, you are going to be able to see the tab in the menu, and you could start to use extension. It's pretty simple and really easy to use. So. One way that you could use it is when, with your own API key. So if you go to select a provider, you could select a lot of providers that we have a, in the VS Code extension. In this case, I'm going to select the Grog provider, and I'm going to uh, enter my API key. When I have my, my API key connected, I'm going to be able to use the models inside of Grog. So that's all. You just have to uh, enter your API key, and you're going to be able to use it. But if you want to use our models, you just have to create an account in CodeGPT, and you're going to be able to use all these features that we are going to see today. So of course, we have the autocomplete. So you could select the models that you're going to use to autocomplete. In this case, I'm, I'm going to select the Blast Turbo that we have in our servers. When you select the model, you could uh, set in the, the delay. And when you start to write, you're going to be able to, to use the autocomplete. It's pretty fast. It's really good. And we have more models to use it uh, if you want to change the, the model to autocomplete your code. So we have more uh, features. For example, when you open the chat in VS Code, when you open the CodeGPT chat, you could use this kind of feature. For example, here we have fix, explain, refactor, document, and unit, unit test. In this case, I'm going to use the explain feature and just have to select the, the feature and you're going to be able to use it inside of VS Code. And it's going to take all the context from your current tab. It's pretty fast with the Grog model, uh, of course, with Llama 3.2. So another really cool feature that you could use is when you explain the, the code, you could select another uh, file in your project. For example, if uh, everyone knows that uh, you need more context to create better answer. So in this case, I'm going to explain the code that I'm using in my current tab, but I'm going to select another file. In this case, I'm going to select the readme file. So now I have better answers. So because I'm using all the context from uh, two files in my, my code base. So in this case, this is pretty cool because you could change the, the code inside of your tab. Uh, using this inline code edit, you could select the code and ask for some changes. In this case, I'm going to uh, ask for add more comments in each line of my code. And when I click uh, to get these answers, I'm going to be able to use these tools and change all the, the lines with more comments. So in this case, I'm asking for add comments. Can I accept or reject the, the changes? But this is really cool. I use it all the time. Another really cool feature that we have is Code Interpreter. So you could start to run code with uh, your own models. In this case, I'm using Llama, but I'm going to use the uh, Code Interpreter features. I'm going to get all this context from this uh, CSV, a lot of data. I'm, I'm using it. And I'm going to ask to Code Interpreter to run this code to get a plot of this data. So when I when I have it, I'm going to have the code. In this case, I'm going to have all the code. And the code is going to start to run. When I run the code, I'm going to be able to see all the uh, results from this code. So in this case, I'm going to see all the graph that I have from this data. Another pretty, pretty cool feature that we have is Stack Overflow. So you could start to search a different kind of posts in, in Stack Overflow. 
So you don't have to go to that web page. You just have to uh, select the slash Stack Overflow, and the Code GPT extension is going to be able to go to that uh, web pages. In this case, we are taking three web pages, and we are going to be able to get all the context, get the context inside of the the response of the model, and we are going to have the answer of the model using the uh, context from these pages and using the current tab that you are working on. And this is the, the I think this is the last one that we have in the, the extension. We have more, but we have a limit time. But in this case, I'm showing you how to um, create a full CRUD with fast, fast API. So if you use Code Builder, the extension is going to be able to use all the files or create all the files for your project. So you could just click in create and you're going to be able to start to create all the files. It's pretty cool because you're going to have all the base of your code of your project and you could start with these uh, kind of features. I think we have questions. No? You could interrupt if you want, or we could, we could go. Hi. Yeah, I yeah. think maybe uh, we could interrupt. Uh, mm -hmm. A few people um, were saying that you went a little fast for the code oh. PT setup. So. Sorry. You no worries if you could uh, maybe go over that again. But yeah, also um, to clarify, I did uh, send a link to a guide that we have uh, with the exact same steps that you went over. So okay, I think we should be good. Okay, so it's it's pretty easy to use. You just have to go to codegpt.co, create an account, and download the extension in the uh, marketplace, uh, VS Code marketplace. You just have to download the extension. You could create your account inside of the extension in VS Code, um, but you could go to codegpt.co and create your account and then connect your account with the extension. It's pretty easy. You just have to uh, click on uh, login and create your account. So in, in, the, in this case, we are using the, the vision. So let me start again in this part. So I'm going to select a image uh, from uh, my computer. I'm, I'm going to uh, upload the image. And I'm going to ask for plot this data. So we are going to use the image models inside of GPT. We are going to have the code and we could run the code. So in this case, we are creating the same graph that we sent with that image and we could compare the two graphs. So it's the same. We are creating this, this graph with Python with the models, just uh, sending the image and asking for plot the data. So we have more options for, of course, we have more options in, in the extension. So you could run your own models inside of your computer. For example, we could use LMM Studio, Olama, or your custom connection. So if you want to run your own model inside of your computer, you just have to select the model and you're going to be able to use it. It's pretty easy too. So in this case, we I, I'm using the agent uh, Stripe API agent from the marketplace. If you connect your account, your Code GPT account in the extension, you're gonna be able to use this kind of agents from the marketplace. We create these agents. We take all the documentation from the Stripe API, and we put all this uh, documentation inside of this agent with Rack and another another technique that we are using. So in this case, I'm asked for create a payment uh, link and I have all the code and I can start to use the code. The code. I can change my agent if I want, 
So if I using a Stripe API agent, I can change to another one to create more different kind of code. And this is the last one. I, here I'm using a, a different kind of model running in my computer. For example, here I'm using DeepSeq Coder uh, V2. This model is really, is really good for coding. So everything is running in my computer in this case. I'm not using uh, internet at all. So you just have to start to run Olama, download the, the model, and you could start to use it in VS Code. So now I'm going to pass to Ignacio. He's going to show you how to create an agent inside of CodeGPT, inside of this uh, studio builder that we have. And then we are going to start to use the agent. So let's go, Ignacio. Thank you, Daniel. Hello, everyone. As Daniel said, I'll be showing you how you can access Grog models from CodeGPT Studio. Now, Daniel, could you please reset the video one more time for me, please? Excellent. OK, this is CodeGPT Studio from our platform. You can not only create your own agents, you can also explore a variety of pre-made agents available in our marketplace. You can think of this as a versatile toolkit. It includes agents that work as software library guides, such as Llama Index or React, assistance for various development tasks. We also have program and languages experts ranging from C to Dart, and even base models from different providers. You can also find in between these models some of the models provided by Grog, such as Llama 3.1 or the latest Llama 3.2. But if you want to create your own model, the process of creating an agent in Studio is actually designed to be straightforward. You can choose one of our templates if you want a faster setup for a specific use case scenario. For this demonstration, a custom agent is enough. OK, that's it. The agent is created. You can then proceed to select the model. We'll be using Llama 3.2. You can also introduce the customized prompt to ensure that the agent response adheres to a specific format of your desire. The next step is to equip it with the necessary information. It is usually common to upload files as context, but today we're loading the repo of CodeGPT's Chrome extension. Now, repositories can be quite extensive, but our algorithm parses the contents into a knowledge graph that our agents can use as context for any of your queries. We chose the CodeGPT Chrome section main branch and generate a graph from it. Now that the graph is ready, you can even proceed to visualize it. This can be quite a daunting side at first, so many nodes each node representing an entity in the project, from files going all the way down to functions and types. These nodes can be filtered, selected, and even searched. The selection of a node will let you see an auto-generated summary and also the code contents of the node itself. The next step is assigning the graph. Assigning the graphs to agents is as simple as clicking a button. We assign it to our new agent. And now that everything's set up, you can find our new ready agent waiting for you in your IDE. First, you select your new agent. Then you can interact with it in any of the way Daniel has demonstrated before. For example, we'll ask a new agent about the function using the Chrome extension to retrieve agents. Now, we'll watch the magic unfold. Blazing fast inferring from Krog. The answer adhering to our specific prompt, the information correct from our own repository, and we can even check the code and reutilize it whenever we need it. This is another one of the ways you can seamlessly incorporate 
and utilize the models offered by Grog within your development workspace. Thank you for your attention. I will now hand it back to Daniel so he can continue with the rest of the presentation. Thank you so much, Ignacio. So this is the last one. We are creating, in this case, a more context. We are putting mo more context inside of the agent. In this case, uh, we are going to connect a database with uh, some agents. So um, in the case of uh, Ignacio show you, we connect the full repo with the full context inside of the agent. In this case, we are going to connect a database so you could create queries uh, with a SQL uh, in our builder. So we have to select the, uh, the type of database, uh, rename, rename the, um, the connection, and then uh, enter the connection link. So when you select the schema, you're going to be able to use an agent to create queries with our uh, studio. So here we are selecting the agent with the full context or from our database. So we are connecting this uh, link connection with our agent, and we are plugging the, the database inside of the agent. So we are using, in this case, a Grog with Llama. So we could start to um, ask more questions about the data in our builder. So in this case, I'm asking about the people, the, the, the user table inside of the, the database. And we could start to use more questions. For example, in this case, I'm going to ask uh, who is vegan in our team. So in this case, you, you could see the query and you could see the result. And the last thing that I'm going to say is uh, we are in process to get our SOC2 uh, certification. And all that you see today, yeah, everything is on premise. So you could take the Docker, take the, the container, and put it in your own uh, data with your own pri privacy infrastructure inside of the Microsoft, Amazon, or Google. So that's all. Thank you so much. Okay, I have to say, um, I already use code GPT with Grok um, in Cursor and I also have VS Code and I'll never go back, but what Ignacio just went over with the knowledge graph um, and then even the vision model, that blew me away. I mean, I was just uh, sitting here listening, smiling. Um, yeah. and I learned <laughs> something new, so that, that was really, really cool. Yeah, it's amazing. We have more features, but we cannot show it everything uh, in, this, in this time. But we, we are building a lot of things. And the uh, Acknowledge Graph is, is amazing. We we used to build a uh, CodeGPT, the same uh, technology that we are building. So yeah, it's yeah, very it's, cool. It's ingenious, honestly. Mm -hmm. I, I actually can't wait to get back to, to coding um, into our code base and then implementing what I just learned today. So thank you for that. Um, with that, we can get into Q&A. We have a few questions uh, mm -hmm. that I'll um, go ahead mm -hmm. and uh, read out loud for us to answer. Uh, so one person asked, what's the best model Grok offers for programming? Um, I'd love to hear your perspectives, but uh, I think uh, the the latest models of 3.1, Llama 3.1, 70B, uh, Llama 3.2 um, as well would be the best for programming. Um, I don't know if you guys have any further insights on that. Yeah, yeah, of course we have a, we have a, a, we have tried a lot of models uh, right now. The latest with Llama 3.2 is really good. It's, yeah, I, I think it's the best right now. But we were um, working with the Mistral um, models too. So they are really good. When you use the model with these kind of tools, you could uh, transform all the, the answers that you have. If you have more context, you're going to have a better answer. So in this case, uh, the latest uh, Llama 3.2 is, is, is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. agree. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Anything to add to that, Ignacio? Sorry, I think I cut you off. No, no, it's okay. I have to agree. 
um, <laughs> okay. Meta's latest model, Llama 3.2, with 90 billion parameters is a beast. The code inference is actually great. I have the pleasure of using it, and I have to agree with Daniel. It's probably the best coding assistant we can get right now. Amazing. And it's available on Grok for the lightning fast inference speed. So I'm excited for everyone else to kind of experience that for themselves today. But thank you. Um, somebody asks, in which code editors can I install code GPT? So I think we went over VS Code, but do you guys want to answer? Um, there are other options, I believe. Yeah, we have a, right now in VS Code, JetBrains and Cursor. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So VS Code, JetBrains, Cursor. Amazing. Yes. Um, let's see. Which Grok models can I use to create agents in Code GPT Studio? Um, yeah, Ignacio. Take that, mm -hmm. If you don't mind, Daniel. So, um, right now, we have Llama 3.1 with 70 billion parameters available. Also, Llama 3, Llama, the later, latest Llama 3.2, and also Mixtral. 8x7b are the models available to create agents through CodeGPT Studio. Awesome. Thanks for that. And just in case, um, I, I want to point out that if you don't have a Grok Cloud account today, you can create one for free at console.grok.com uh, and you can um, generate a free API key to access uh, these models and play around with them as well. Thanks, Ignacio. Uh, next question is going to be, do the agents in the Code GPT marketplace continuously update their context? Yeah, yeah. So we have a different kind of um, agents with different kind of context. So that's a, a big challenge that we have right now because we have to get the context from the uh, last documentation, for example, in the Stripe API. API, we have to get the full documentation and uh, put it inside of the model. Uh, but we are doing manually right now that work. Uh, but probably in, in a few days, we're going to get more agents doing that kind of, uh, that, that kind of ask a task. Uh, so right now we are doing manually, but everything is updated. Awesome. Yeah, um, I've, I've seen that a lot uh, everywhere with, uh, I think we partnered with Crew AI before. There are a lot of other mm -hmm. providers out there for tools, people just replacing their everyday manual work with a bunch of AI agents. Um, it's amazing. So I, I can't wait uh, for you guys to kind of yeah. integrate your own agents into your workflow there and, you know, spend less time on the, the manual, yeah. you know, updating and more time on innovative features like the ones you showed us today. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So next question. Oh, this is a good one. So sometimes agents hallucinate. How do you solve that problem? Big challenge. And yeah, we, we are trying to get more context. When you have a lot of context and when you create a really good prompt, um, probably you're going to be able to get a less hallucination. But I think it's a it's a big challenge that um, the all uh, all companies that are working on. But right now we are doing a lot of context, a lot of all, all this uh, acknowledged graph that we have, and this connection with a database. And we are show you the code that we uh, model generate, so you could have to confirm that the code is good or you, you could use it. So. I think the developer role is a uh, principal in this case. Yeah, for sure. Um, mm -hmm. Just to add to that, hallucinations do happen. Um, knowledge graphs and you know retrieval augmented generation, that's a way to fight any hallucinations because it's going to be directly pulling from your code base. But uh, this is where uh, AI doesn't replace us humans yet. Um, yes. we, we have this great assistant. <laughs> but it's all not yet to, <laughs> to um, use these tools to you know speed up your development process, but it's not going to completely replace us. Then we're there to have fun testing the code um, and making sure everything everything works as we desire. So um, that's that's that question answered. And then we have one more here. Do code GPT agents allow parallel execution? 
Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I think yeah. I think we have to we have to go to our team to ask a, that kind of question. I I I don't have the answer right now. Yeah, no worries. That's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. I'm sure um, if the viewers today uh, follow us on X, um, follow Code GPT on X, I think we can hopefully drop the link. Or I don't know if you have other links to drop as well um, for the latest and greatest updates. Yeah, that's good. We we have a Discord channel too, uh, oh, Discord cool. server too. So, uh, but we are posting a lot of uh, all the updated that we have in the x channel okay awesome yeah so please make sure to uh follow us grok inc on x and also code gpt ai on x i believe is the user uh if i'm if i'm not mistaken perfect so follow us on x um for the latest updates uh we also have a discord server uh hopefully we can put that in chat and then in the youtube recording information as well for everybody to check out with that I think we are done with questions. Um, so just to confirm with the team. Yeah, it looks like we're done with questions. Um, I just want to say thank you uh, first and foremost to Daniel and Ignacio. You guys were great. This was super exciting. Personally, um, I can't wait to kind of get in and test out these features. Uh, and also thank you to our amazing audience. Uh, thanks for tuning in. We really hope you learned something new today and that you're going to check out Code GPT powered by Grok um, to just fuel your developer experience today. Okay. I think with that, we will tune out. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.